episode eight of The Year I Got Skinny. This was my greatest battle. This was my greatest battle in losing 140 pounds, down from 280. And this part of the story takes us to September of 2017. And so if you have been watching this, you know that we left off on a family vacation in Wyoming, I, a family vacation that would forestall the bariatric surgery that I intended to have in January of 2018. So it's a surgery I never did have and I no longer qualify for. I lost more weight then the surgeon even forecast that I would lose with the gastric sleeve. And the key thing happened in this little season of time, September, October, November, December of 2017, as I fought my biggest, greatest battle. And so I came home from the trip and I had told myself that since I wasn't able to have the surgery, which was kind of soul crushing, by the way, at the time, that what I would do is I would prepare for the bariatric surgery by managing my future regrets. I would prove to myself in these months that I had done everything I could do to lose weight so that when I went into that surgery, I would just know this was my last recourse. This was going to help me achieve the life I was seeking. And I would not have regrets because I would know that I had really done everything. And so that was my purpose in those months. Now, I also knew I needed to lose more than the 100 pounds that I was going to be losing, according to the surgeon's forecast, with the surgery. So I was 280 in his office, and he said, you'll get down to about 180 with the surgery. A spoiler, because I ended up at 140. And, is, and actually, it was a year later when I went. Anyway, they were astounded because they've just never seen anything like it. Okay. So here we are in September of 2017. And so that was my purpose, prove to myself that I had done everything I could do to lose weight. And I knew I needed to lose some extra pounds anyway, that 180 was even still a little high. So like, why not work on this? So there I was working on it. And so I started with a water fast, which you can find out about that on YouTube. But the key moment was September 16th of 2017. That is when I launched my one meal a day eating that many of you know me for. And I'll also add September 16th, who knew? Who knew? Because if you watched episode two, you know I had a little supernatural intervention on September 16th, one year before in 2016. So what? <laughs> exactly one year I'd be doing one meal a day? Okay, so what's one meal a day? What, if you're just finding me, what? What's that? That's crazy. What's one meal a day? Okay, so at the time, intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating was getting very, very popular. And all that is, is that, so, you know, you're not eating all day long, essentially. So in the 24 hours of the day, you say, oh, I'm going to eat in eight hours and I'm going to not eat in 16 hours. And that's all it is. And so it's really st structuring your eating with the clock, okay? And so some people will eat in eight hours out of the day, or five hours out of the day, you can structure it how you choose. Of course, there, I'm just there, I'm not, you know, and I think this is crazy that this would work, but I hadn't tried it before. There's all these like cultish, outrageous claims about it, and I thought there is no way this works, but I'm here proving to myself that I did everything I could do, so I'm gonna flip and do this intermittent fasting thing, but all y'all out there eating in like eight hours or whatever, I feel like that's kind of amateurish if I'm gonna test intermittent fasting to prove to myself that I'd done everything so I could go in that surgery room, I'm gonna test it. I'm eating in one hour, because <laughs> I do everything big, <laughs> including get to 280 pounds, okay. So I'm eating one meal a day in one hour. But then that part of me that's like, uh, you know, this ain't going to work, is saying, you are going to be starving all the time on all the past diets. It's hunger was such a big, big problem. Such a big problem. I'm like, you're going to be flipping crazy hungry, eating one meal. Eating one meal? What? And so I thought, okay. No, but I'm proving to myself here proven to myself. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be strategic about what is actually in that bowl. Now I know the bowl needs to be nourishing. Okay. So what's in the bowl needs to be nourishing. I know it needs to be calorie minded because I'd learned on past diets. Yeah. Calories do still matter. Okay. Lots of things maybe matter at the same time. Calories, carbs, a lot of things matter. Needs to be healthy, whole foods oriented, that nutrition that's getting me, you know, into my amazing future life. All of that, 
all present in one big old bowl, okay? Because I'm thinking, if I'm eating once, guys, I'm eating big. <laughs> eating big. Now, if I'm eating big, I got to be extra strategic because I know I can fill that bowl up with a lot of, I don't know, butter and bacon <laughs> and still end up big myself, right? Okay, so what I do is I load it with a bunch of vegetables, which, you know, vegetables are a very calorie leveraged food. You know, they're very low in calories for the bulk that they put in your stomach. So that was my, you know, basic idea is I'd have a big old bowl of food once a day. So that's what I started on September 16th of 2017. And you know what? Oh, it worked. <laughs> it flipping worked. I was losing a half a pound a day. And then I thought, oh my gosh, could I lose faster? <laughs> of course I asked that. You know, I did. And so I, I cut the calories in the bowl. I fiddled around with days of eating 500 or 800 calories because that's what I was going to do for bariatric surgery. And I thought that's what they're recommending for that. Let me see if I can lose even faster. Though I was at this point, I mean, I was losing a half pound a day, which that competes with bariatric surgery right there. And what I realized with these smaller meals of 500 or whatever, I'm not getting to tomorrow, at least not real grumpy. <laughs> I'm not satisfied. I'm not as full. I know I'm not going to be able to do this every single day, you know, to get to the finish line, to maybe keep doing it the rest of my life or whatever else. And it wasn't sustainable for me. And so I landed in the range of about 1,000 to 1,200 calories, which for a lot of people, that's, you know, that's like, oh, God, it's itty bitty. Well, I'm 5'3", you know, okay. So um, for me, it was a good little model for weight loss. That amount, that food got me all the way to the finish line, all the way to the finish line. Wow. But I was there tweaking, you know, so like, especially the calories, tweaking, working it out. You know, gosh, this one, the texture's bad. Change the texture. Flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Change the flavor. Change it. Change it. Make it work. Because my battle, you guys, it is the battle we all have to fight. It is everyone, each of our own greatest battle is right in here. And it is that battle within that I fought in such a masterful way in the fall of 2017. And it set me on that trajectory of finding that way of eating that worked so well for me. Now, so many people in the Eat Like a Bear community have adopted this, a very similar approach to this. And I teach exactly what I put in that bowl. But I always tell people, you know, you can adapt this to make it your own. And now that you've heard this episode in the story, you know why. I think that my process of going through that, of doing that analysis, was such a key thing for me in just all of this. And I really encourage everyone to do the same thing. Fight those battles. And so the, the, the battle scars, the battle muscles, I guess I developed battle muscles it would turn out that was a very good thing because I was about to face probably the biggest challenge that I would have. And so I was about to go through the holidays, okay? And that's its own challenge. But how I handled it really set me up for something very big that normally, typically, really would have been the end of all this and I would have been in that bariatric surgeon's office, okay? So January's coming up in the timeline. Something happened in January that would have been the end of all this, but it wasn't. Fascinating.